Hello art students, this is Mrs. Myers and today we will be doing step two of our family totem poles. And today is all about color. So today you're going to need your um, animal pieces for your totem pole. You have already taken your um, animal personality test to see which animal best matches your personality. Um, each member of your family should have been able to go ahead and take that test as well and see what animal they got. Um, so you should have that. You're also going to need your choice of coloring materials. So you can use crayons, markers, or coloring pencils, or even paint if you would like. I am going to be using markers for mine so my color can be nice and bold. Um, so let's dig in. So my pieces in particular that I'm going to be using for this example, I have the rat, the dog, and the chicken, which were what um, matched my family members' personalities. The rat is my husband, the dog is me, and the chicken is my son. So we're going to, I'm going to be putting these three pieces together. So when we are thinking about color, I want you as a family to come up with four colors that you guys can all use so that all of the pieces go well together. So it's unity. So I'm going to be choosing four colors for um, my three pieces for my family. Um, the three colors for one, I know I want to use the color blue because that's all of our favorite color. So I'm going to make sure I get the blue. Get um, some, let me get another shade of blue because since it's our favorite color, I'm gonna get two shades of blue. So two shades of blue and yellow because it's nice and bright, and red because it's really bold, really bold color. So there's my four colors that I will be using on my um, on our totem pole, and you can also utilize white and black. So four colors plus white and black for your for your pieces for your totem pole, okay? So it's up to you um, how you color it. Everybody can color it however they want as long as it's nice and neat and you stay inside of the line. Um, but you wanna make sure that you're all using the same colors that you guys chose. All right, so let's zoom in a little bit more. And when using marker, it is important to always put something underneath um, something underneath your paper so you don't get marker on the table. Same thing with paint as well. You wanna make sure you have something underneath. All right. So I'm gonna just start off with the red Put on the rat because I wanna make the nose red. Trace it first, color in one direction. Um, go back in. Remember I said that you can use black as well, black and white. And make this part of the eye black and leave this part of the eye white these whiskers I'm actually going to go ahead and make those black as well so I'm going to color them in coloring in one direction stand inside of the line get in some of this blue. I'm going to make the face of my blue. Outlining it first. And color in one direction. I'm going to trace around the eyes too so I don't accidentally go inside of the eyes with color. I 
have some pattern work that is going on the ears and on the body and on the tail. So I'm going to put every other one, I'm going to do this color. I want to leave some space so that I'll be able to bring in some of those other colors that we decided that we're going to use. to make sure if you haven't already it is known um, in the totem poles of the Native American or indigenous people culture um, that there's very bold black outlines so if you haven't already um, you're going to make sure that you have uh, traced all of your lines with a black marker or a black crayon which I did that in the last session Actually, because I know, just to make it easy on myself, I know that I want this back of the rat to be yellow. So I'm going to just trace it. And because yellow is a light color, I know that my blue will show up on top of it with no problem. So I'm going to just, just to save time, go ahead and color with the yellow. And if I get a little bit inside of my triangles, I know that it's not going to matter because I can cover it up with the blue. not when mark you're using markers try not to touch any of the other color because it will bleed into your um, the color the space where you don't want it to go okay. and I can go in with the blue and make those triangles on the back blue got a nice pattern on the back looks very using geometric shapes. We still have the background too, so we can choose to um, choose some color for the background as well. Um, we have to use the same colors that we uh, used already. So I'm actually going to should bring in some the black. Uh, decision, decisions. I'm gonna play around with these lines that I made. I'm gonna make some of them thick. 
line and then leave that the next one thin so I'm gonna follow that pattern thick thin thick thin thick some color. Mm -hmm. Color this first one red. See why it's good to have the paper behind it so we don't get that on the table. Leave the other one white in between. pieces in between white to bring bring in that white too and I'm just looking at mine and on the back I see some spaces that I didn't hit with the yellow and I want to make sure there's no white gaps no white spaces I'm going to try not to touch that blue because you know that yellow and blue when they're mixed together turn green and I don't want any green to come into <laughs> the back of the rat And now I am done with my first piece. All right, so now those same colors, you're going to go ahead and make sure that everyone uses those same four colors plus black and white. All right, and now they are all colored using the same four colors. Blue, I chose blue, two shades of blue, yellow and red and black and white. Um, I hope you guys had fun coloring as a family and don't forget to make sure you put the caps on those markers. Bye, see you next time.